Hello everyone, welcome back to another reading vlog. My name is Risha and this is For the Love of Classics. I'm just sitting down to film after a long cleaning session and I love to watch other people clean their houses or just anything um, and I thought I will just film myself do it as well. So it's 2023 already. I was so cautious in setting up a reading goal for this year because I was pretty much unsuccessful in my reading goals for the year 2022. So I decided to read five books in 2022, which is not a big goal at all, considering you booktubers basically read 100 to 200 books a year. But I just challenged myself to read five because I knew a lot would be happening and I wouldn't get a chance to read as much as I wanted. I did finish that reading challenge only because I read four children's books. The only two books I read last year were Lady Audley's Secret by Mary Elizabeth Braddon and Miss Brill by Catherine Mansfield. That's it. <laughs> um, I started another one uh, which was George Gissing's New Grub Street but I have left it halfway in the middle. So I was so cautious in setting up a reading goal for 2023 because of what happened last year and I just kept looking at everybody else's challenges but I wasn't setting up my own but I finally decided to just set it um, without any pressure um, and again this year I've just set it to five books so I have challenged myself to read just five books in the year 2023 um, and it doesn't matter if it's like children's books because those are books as well. I just usually end up reading a lot of children's books because my um, nieces and nephews read them and if I have to buy them gifts I usually get them books. So if I go to a bookshop I usually browse through children's books and because they're just, I don't know, some of them are just like 10 pages or 20 pages I end up quickly reading them. So even though I don't buy them or own them, I do read them when I visit bookshops. I just sit there and read children's books. Sometimes I do that. I might be reading some children's books this year, but hopefully I do end up reading some adult books as well. Hi guys, so welcome to my reading vlog. I have been reading Miss Brill by Catherine Mansfield. The reason why I started this was because it is a very small and light book. It is a very small and light book 
and it's very easy to travel with while I'm moving around London so I read the first story so it has a collection of three short stories uh, I read the first one which was marriage a la mode let me show you the name it's called marriage a la mode I think I'm butchering the pronunciation but it looks it sounds French it was actually a really interesting short story because it was about this guy who was working and he has to travel back and forth between his workplace and where his family is living and we see that his wife changes with time so he's busy in working but she's just busy in having fun with her friends but this couple is facing a lot of differences in their priorities and beliefs in life and by the end of the story they have to sort of decide whether they want to continue with this relationship even with all the differences they now have as a couple um, it had a sort of blunt ending but I feel like with all short stories the, the endings are pretty blunt and that's one of the reasons why I don't like to read short stories but this was interesting it had me hooked and I was really enjoying the writing style I've started the second one which is called Miss Brill so this is the first time I'm reading anything by Catherine Mansfield and I am actually really enjoying it I am also reading uh, New Grub Street by George Kissing. I started it a month ago, I'd say, but I left it in the middle um, because it's a um, heavy book, basically. It's a thick book and I can't travel around with it as easily. Vakas is reading a book as well. Vakas, do you want to share what you've been reading? I'm reading this book, Shoe Dog by Phil Knight, and it's a memoir by the creator of Nike. So I have been reading Excellent Women by Barbara Pym. This is the first time I'm reading a book by Barbara Pym. I did not know about this author much except I've heard a few booktubers talk about her on their channels. So she was a British writer who was writing during the 1950s to 60s I think. Um, well she passed away in 1980 so before that. Um, so a modern classic. Um, by a British female writer. Um, I was really struggling with this book. I, It's a very slow book. It's about this 30 something year old um, female who is single and uh, she's a, her father was something in the church clergy or something. I'm not really um, even though I read a lot of classics, I do struggle with the terminology about churches and the people who are in, um, like, who preach or pre who preach there. There's clergymen and priests, but I, I'm not sure exactly which one falls where, and there are vicars and, like, lots of them. Anyways, she is a clergyman's daughter. That's all I need to know because it's irre irrelevant um, in the storyline. Um, but she is very, because she's a clergyman's daughter, everyone expects her to be very well behaved and generous, which she is. Um, but nobody is expecting her to be married because she is now in her 30s. She's leading a very dull life and I was bored to death while I was reading about her life. Um, the story actually got interesting at 140 um, at page number 140 that was exactly the point where I just was like finally something is happening here and this is a book which is 288 pages long so 140 is just like halfway through the book so the first half of the book was completely boring because it was so boring the next half becomes interesting because now something is finally happening um, in this lady Mildred Lathbury's life and now I've really 
started reading it quickly because it's something's happening and I hope to finish it soon uh, I'm currently on page number 239 so just 40 45 pages left it's a very slow book well in the first half anyways but the writing style is very basic um, and it's just everyday things which are in this book just making a cup of tea or um, just having a chilled afternoon she doesn't really have a job as such she just helps women with the church um, so it's not like she has a very busy schedule or um, it's just a very slow paced life in this and she's living in London so that's a plus because I'm currently living in London as well so I'm enjoying her description of places I do want to continue reading The Odd Women by George Gissing which I obviously started but then left in the middle so I stopped at chapter 19 I was about to start chapter 19 that's here so right in the middle I still have my highlighter in there and I, and I remember what was going on in the book it's about this writer who's struggling with getting things done with with just publishing a book because he's not inspired and his wife um, who was initially attracted to him or married him because she thought he was a writer which was such an awesome thing and she was just like totally impressed uh, when he published his first book um, Edwin Reard and that's the name of the guy so she marries him because she was totally impressed by this new emerging writer who was just like had like best-selling book but then he's lacking inspiration um, he doesn't just want to write book for the sake of writing a book he wants to be inspired and wants to write something good he just doesn't want to write something which the audience will read and that's why he should write it um, so he's been offered like various things or he's been told about various propositions um, about various opportunities that are available for writers to make a living or to just earn money like write articles in the newspaper or just anything basically as long as he's getting paid but he doesn't want to do that at all and this guy Reardon has a friend who is the complete opposite he's just like thinking about how to get money um, so even though he's not really into writing he's just writing stuff um, he's making his sisters write for him what's the name of that guy um, Jasper yes uh, so Jasper writes anything I mean literally um, as long as he's getting paid and he gets paid well because he knows the market and he knows what is needed so he just writes exactly that and he gets paid really well and he's like slowly climbing up the ladder um, financially he has two unmarried sisters who are actually good at writing and he just makes them work for him um, gets them to write gets it published and gets money I don't know if he does he give them anything in return maybe a little bit I'm not really I don't really remember but he's just basically that guy who's just like thinking financially and is you know thinking about the numbers while this artistic guy is not and he's struggling he's struggling really hard and because of his struggles his marriage is suffering because now the woman who was in love with this writer doesn't love him anymore because she thinks he's a weak guy um, and she's thinking that because she's comparing him with Jasper she's comparing him him with a lot of other writers who are either writing successfully and are getting published or are just not writing but still making money by writing for the newspaper or just writing articles or anything to get paid while her husband is basically waiting for inspiration to come while she's starving and she does starve I mean they have to sell their books their furniture pretty much everything they have a child and um, Edward Edwin um, he just has this integrity in art the artistic integrity which he's not willing to sacrifice yet so this is where I'm at in the book um, I don't know why did I stop it I just wanted an audiobook but 
Um, the Audible subscription is like nine pounds a month, and that's expensive. I I mean that's expensive for me. Um, so even though I want to read an audiobook, I can't afford it. So I'll just have to read it <laughs> uh, the old-fashioned way. So I bought two books and they are both non-fiction. I shouldn't say I bought them basically because um, I wanted to read them and my husband wanted to read them as well. So I asked him to buy himself a book because it's high time he gets himself a book. His current read is a book which I got him because he said he wanted to read it. He's still reading it, it's been a couple of years now. Um, but these were some of the books which because every time I go into a bookshop he follows me and we both browse through books and he picked up two books and he was like this sounds good Risha and this sounds good and I was like well why don't you just buy them because I secretly wanted to read them as well so here are those two books which he bought so it's his book haul but I'll show you guys because I'll read them anyways and they are going to go on my bookshelf so the first book is White Fragility why it's so hard for white people to talk about racism by robin d'angelo it's a it's one of those bestseller books you always find on the front shelf of non-fiction section um i was never really interested in reading something like this until i started living with white people and coming face to face with how different races or different type of people look at something this book is published by penguin of course it's their orange non-fiction edition and it comes under the section society politics how long is it 150 pages it has quite small font uh, but i hope it smells good so it has 12 chapters. I don't usually read nonfiction, so this was something which I was interested in, so I, I hope I find it easy to read. The next book which we got is The History of the World in Bite-Sized Chunks by Emma Marriott. And it's pretty self-explanatory. Self-explanatory self-explanatory is it you know what i mean um 
the title explains what this book is about. Pithy and comprehensive guide to everything you need to know about the world's major historical events from ancient civilizations to the end of the wo Second World War. Full of all the essential facts and details, this book takes you on a journey from the Empire of Alexander the Great to China's Tang Dynasty, the Age of Enlightenment, the American Civil War and beyond, leaving no stone unturned. The history of the world in bite-sized chunks gathers together the strands the strands of time to discover how the world how the modern world came to be as it is i am watching this documentary on netflix about the ancient the lost ancient civilization which i'm absolutely loving and i know that journalist in the documentary has also written books but i was just like quite interested in the history and especially the ancient civilizations so i thought i should start somewhere and that's why i'm gonna start from here this book is 170 pages long and it has a better font size uh, this has six chapters the first one is first empires and civilizations chapter two is the ancient world chapter three the middle ages chapter four world on the move Revolution and European Imperialism, A New World Order. I am excited about this one. Okay, and another thing which I got, which I guess doesn't count as a book, or does it? It's a brain game for, brain games for adults. Puzzles and brain teasers, uh, I guess it doesn't count. I'm, I used to enjoy doing puzzles a lot as a child. Obviously, didn't do them ever as a teenager or as a young adult or as an adult and then I come to the UK and I see lots of people sitting in buses doing puzzles and I was like well I gotta try some I got this book for my husband as a gift um, he was like Risha you can just return it to the bookshop I don't think I'm ever gonna do that but I have kept it because I wanted to do them <laughs> I've done a few. I'm struggling with it. It's not as easy as it may appear to some people. I just visited um, Azerbaijan. It's a Central Asian country. I absolutely loved visiting it because I, it was just such an educational experience. And while there, I saw this non-fiction about Azerbaijan, which I read in four or five days um i couldn't find it on goodreads i hate when that happens um, i'm going to try and add it on goodreads as soon as i can but i learned so much and it was a non-fiction it was like this quick summary or a quick overview about a country like it's geography it's history it's econo economy it's like politics and everything in between and i absolutely enjoy reading it and i was just thinking that i usually see people be on airports buying books while they're traveling and they're just like beach reads or like really intense non-fiction and i'm always unsure as to which book to take with me while while i'm on vacation and i had the best time this on this vacation while reading about that particular place i was at i think what i'm gonna do is try and read books about the place I'm visiting while I'm there because you are actually interested in the place you're visiting for the first time and if you're reading a non-fiction about that place at that particular time you're actually gonna devour it which is exactly what I did. I went to a few bookshops in Baku. I went to three but I think I just filmed in one. The people in that bookshop were so good um, the salespeople in the bookshop were so good and so informative about the books i had a chat with them the issue was that a lot of books were in turkish or russian or in azerbaijani there was a good section of english books in one of the shops which is where i did film so i'm going to insert footage from that shop mm -hmm.
ask them if there was any particular book by an Azerbaijani writer which they would like to recommend. I, I basically stunned them with my question, I guess. But the book which they did recommend, end up recommending, was this one. It's called Days in the Caucasus? The name of the book is Days in the Caucasus. I'm going to insert a picture of the book here by Benin. So that's the book they recommended, which I absolutely love the description of that book. It was about um, this girl who was born in Azerbaijan and how she has this like multiple cultural influence uh, because she has this Muslim community around her and then a Christian community and then she's in the middle. Um, but I thought it looked absolutely amazing. So I do want to buy it here in London because it was excellent expensive in Azerbaijan. So I'm gonna try and see if I can find this book in Waterstones or online on Book Depository. Another book which they recommended was The Man on the Rails by Roshan Abdullahoglu. Obviously I said that incorrectly. I do apologize. The Man on the Rails. Um, this book was the summary on the back was more intense and I'm not sure if I would enjoy it but it has won the 2020 Reader's Favorite Award. Two salesmen recommended this book to me but I'm not sure if it's my cup of tea. So I think what I would like to do is read a book by a writer from a particular place I visit because that's a very interesting idea which has just come to my mind now but I, I think it's gonna be amazing I'm going to learn more about different kinds of people from different places by doing that uh, while also reading which I enjoy doing I wanted to ask you guys if you guys would be interested in watching me visit museums visiting different places with my friends um, because I, I do that a lot I do film it but I'm not sure if you guys would be interested and should I upload it so if you guys are interested, let me know. I will just incorporate it in my reading vlogs. I'm gonna finish this vlog here. I'm gonna sit down and try to finish Barbara Pym's Excellent Women. Did I tell you guys? This is the book I got myself. So my husband got me a book for my birthday, which I did not want to read. It was like a new release. It was just green in color, which is what is like my favorite color green is my favorite color at the moment so he got me a green book which was a new release the retelling of hamlet so it was hamlet i think was the book which he got me but i exchanged it for excellent women by barbara pym so this is actually a birthday present from my husband and it was green as well so it was a win-win um so i'm just gonna go and finish that book and hopefully we'll start something new or just continue the odd women after wish me luck and i hope to see you all in my next video very very soon bye guys